Hi and hello, I'm Ben, and I'm here with a different kind of video today. Uh, this will be my first and possibly only competitive Pokemon guide. This video will mostly be in regards to draft leagues, as that is the main format that I play, but it can certainly still be applied to other formats as well, such as like BDC for instance. Uh, so the reason as to why I'm making this video. I was editing GBA Week 2 Power Rankings earlier, and I noticed the point where Melon and I were talking about Randy's Suicune Eevee spread. We didn't have the exact numbers in front of us at the time, but I was looking at it afterwards and I was just like, wow, this is terrible. So I wanted to explain why I thought the spread is so unoptimal, but it's not really easy to do that in the necessary depth without dragging the video on for way too long, so instead I decided that I would just briefly mention it in post and then shamelessly plug myself into this video. So if you're coming here from the GBA, hi, welcome, my name is Ben. I'm 20 years old, I'm a sophomore at the Catholic University of America, and I am a weeb. So let's just talk about this Eevee spread and why it's not optimal. It's clear to me that Randy's thought process here was to simply outspeed a max speed Advent Breloom, and then throw all the rest of his Eevees into bulk, purely into the defense and HP. He wanted to be as physically defensive as he possibly could, so he just put max defense and the rest into HP. There are two real issues with this, other than the fact that the investment was seemingly thrown in there at random. So, the first issue. Suicune is a Pokémon that likes to run Substitute a lot, and Randy did indeed bring Sub in this game. Seismic Toss is a somewhat common move on Pokémon that would otherwise be very easy setup fodder, such as like Blissey for example. Now, I don't think Jolt had anything on his roster that would ever really run Seismic Toss or Nightshade or anything like that, but it's usually a good idea to make sure that those moves can't break Suicune's Sub. At level 50, you'll want a bare, bare minimum of 228 HP EVs. I know that's an even number, uh, because it would be giving you, I believe, a 204 HP stat. I know that's an even number, and most people usually don't like to run that. Most people just like running odd numbers. But we'll talk more about that later. Uh, but for now, just know that it's not a huge deal to run even HP on a Mon with Substitute if it has leftovers, which Suicune will run basically every single time. But here's why you'll want that as a bare minimum for level 50. Seismic Toss does exactly 50 damage, as that is the user's level, and Pokemon always rounds down. If Suicune has 203 HP, 203 divided by 4 is 50.75. Rounded down is 50. Seismic Toss does 50 damage and breaks sub. However, 204 divided by 4 is 51. Seismic Toss does 50 and does not break sub. And if you don't want an even number, that's fine. You can just run 236 EVs, so you have an odd number, and Seismic Toss still won't break the sub. As for level 100 Suicunes, you'll want to run exactly 252 in your HP if you don't want Seismic Toss-like moves to break the sub. It gives you a stat of 404, and if you were to run, if you wanted to run an odd number, uh, the only other number you could really run would be 403, and 403 divided by 4 is 100.75, which rounds down to 100, so Seismic Toss breaks the sub. I learned this one the hard way. <laughs> Uh, but 404 divided by 4 is 101, so Seismic Toss does not break the sub. The second real issue with Randy's Eevee spread is the big one and the main reason behind this video. Like I said before, it's clear to me that he just wanted to creep a max speed Adamant Breloom, so he just slapped on a Timid Nature and did just that. But the general rule of thumb is that you'll want to give the boosting nature to the stat with the highest number, excluding HP of course. There's some super complicated math formula that explains exactly how all the numbers work out and whatnot, but to put it as simply as I can, a boosting nature increases a stat number by an extra 10%. So to put that in perspective, the item Wise Glasses boosts the holder's special attack by that same amount, 10%. So that means that a timid max special attack Pokemon with Wise Glasses will have essentially the same special attack as a modest max special attack variant without Wise Glasses. Uh, so, for this Suicune set, because the defense stat that Randy wants is so much higher than the speed stat, running the boosting nature in defense is so much more optimal. To make this concept a bit easier to understand, let's, let's picture this. 10 times 1.1 is 11. 100 times 1.1 is 110. 1000 times 1.1 is 1100. Now let's look at those numbers again. 11 minus 10 is 1. 110 minus 100 is 10. 1100 minus 1000 is 100. 
basically, the higher number that you have, the higher the percentage increase you will receive if you give your Pokemon a boosting nature in that stat. So for Randy in this game, I believe that this would have been a very good EV spread right here, what you're seeing on screen. He could have run a little more into the HP or a little less than defense, vice versa, if he wanted to live a certain hit from a certain mod on Jolt's roster, but this is solid nonetheless. Uh, and if you haven't seen the Randy vs. Jolt game, I would highly recommend watching it. It was just a top tier performance from both sides, undoubtedly the game of the week, and likely one of the best games of all season. It was just very, very impressive. So now that we've covered Randy's Suicune set, let's look at Pokemon at level 100, the standard levels for Showdown Draft Leagues, which is the format that I play the most. So for the most part, everything is essentially the same. The only thing really worth mentioning is that if you invest the right amount of EVs into a nature boosted stat, you can sometimes get two stat points instead of just one for an investment of four EVs. I basically have all these numbers memorized, uh, but if I try to convey that information, that would just make things even more confusing. Uh, but it's just a fun thing to keep in mind when prepping. Maybe you can get an extra stat point or two here or there. Try to always mess around with the EVs and see what you can come up with. Alright, so we've talked a lot about natures and how they affect a Pokemon stats, but let's shift gears and talk about EVs without a nature boost. So let's start by looking at Blissey. Uh, its base HP is so absurdly high that it really doesn't need any investment. Uh, its obvious weak point is of course that base 10 defense stat. So with no investment, it has a defense number of 56. Uh, but with 252 EVs, that number gets more than doubled, giving it a defense stat of 119. Generally speaking, you'll want to give your Pokémon a boosting nature in the stat that you want to be the highest, and put a bunch of EVs into its lower base stats. Sometimes you'll be forced to run something like a Careful Nature Mega Aggron or something like that. Uh, giving the boosting nature to a lower base stat, and, like, I mean, if you need it to live a certain special attack, then yeah, by all means, go for it. The final point that I want to cover is HP. I briefly mentioned before that running an even HP number is oftentimes just fine, and sometimes even better than running an odd number, uh, but generally speaking, it doesn't really matter unless it's a Pokemon weak to rocks. Uh, there are two main things you'll want to look at in the HP stat, like the actual number. Try to take less damage from rocks and heal more from leftovers if applicable. Rotom is a really good example for this. With 252 HP, it has a hit point stat of 304. 304 divided by 16 is 19, meaning this set will heal 19 hit points with every turn of Leftovers Recovery. However, 304 divided by 8 is 38, meaning that it will take 38 hit points of damage when it switches in on Stealth Rocks. Rotom does like to pivot a lot, and it likes to come in often on rocks to defog them away, but at the same time, it's really nice to be healing up that extra hit point for every turn it stays on the field. Uh, but here's the most annoying part about that. For a Pokemon like Rotom Wash uh, that takes neutral from rocks, it is impossible to have an HP stat that gives you the most out of leftovers, but also lets you take the least amount of damage from rocks. By that I mean, leftovers recovery is 1 16th of the Pokemon's health, neutral rocks is 1 8th, so if a number is evenly divisible by 16, it's also evenly divisible by 8, so it's like a 50-50 trade-off there. It it's honestly really doesn't matter of preference at that point, uh, it's definitely something to look at and keep in mind during prep. Uh, especially if, like, of course, a Pokemon doesn't have leftovers, then you want to make sure that the HP number it has doesn't make you take more rocks damage than uh, you would take if you had just, like, a few fewer EVs. Like, if you just removed a few EVs from HP, maybe put them into the defense. Yeah, it's just something to always, it's always really good to keep that in mind. So before we end things off, let's review what we've learned. Point number one. If you can, give your Pokemon a boosting nature in the stat that you want to be the highest. Oftentimes, the highest stat will also be the Pokemon's highest base stat. But that's not always a great way to remember it, because then things get really confusing with mons like the base 100 mythicals, like Mew and Shaman and whatnot. Point number two! It's generally most optimal to run a lot of EVs into lower base stats. This doesn't mean you should run max special attack or a large ch chunk of bulk into like a Mega Beedrill, but rather, you should always run 252 defense on Blissey and Chansey. Giving it a boosting nature is up to you. Personally, I'm weird and I like to run Modest Blissey with a pretty fair amount of special attack investment so it isn't hard setup fodder for a lot of Mons, because that's a very solid move pool, uh, and its base 75 special attack isn't the worst in the world, it's salvageable. Yeah, I just think it's really fun for picking off Mons like Salamence with Ice Beam as it tries to set up a Dragon Dance. Point number three, even HP is not objectively a bad thing. Take that HP number, divide it by eight if it's neutral rock, 16 if it resists rock, 
and then like see how much damage it will be taking from Stealth Rocks on the Switch. Uh, but just know that having an even number does not mean necessarily that you will be taking more from rocks than you would if you had an odd number. And lastly, Pokemon always rounds down. So yeah, I guess that's it. Thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it when people watch my content. It really does make all the work feel worth it, and it truly does boost my self-esteem. So thanks, my friends. It really does mean a lot. So uh, if you're new, uh, you may have come for the guide, but I hope you'll stay for the memes. With that, I think I'm going to call it a day. I'll see you all next time.